everybody here to Brown Sugar Confessions. We are so happy to be with y'all tonight. And we have a great subject and we can't wait to talk to you all about it. Remember, you can always like and subscribe to us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. We are on Spotify. Doc Val is on TikTok. Technically, we're all on dick, on TikTok, but Doc Val is the one with the most followers because she's going viral every other week. But that's neither here nor there. Speaking of which, Doc Val is out doing Doc Val things, so hopefully she will return to us uh, within the near future. But before she gets back, we have a lot to talk about, so we are going to get started right away. And let's get started with catching up with Miss KD. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Well, I am trying to thaw out after, like, consistent snowmageddons what else is there to do besides eat because there's a foot of snow every other day um so it was really interesting i don't know if you guys are on any of the you know facebook groups and stuff like that but as of lately they keep sharing these posts from this group called um photoshop like edit my photo like edit my photo through photoshop or whatever and I really have wasted a very good part of my life <laughs> these last couple of days just scouring that group because they, I, I love how, and I, I really think it's a lot of millennials, probably millennials and a little bit of Gen Z just can't take anything serious. We can't take anything serious. So people post a fit photo, they want to get Photoshopped. People will, then someone will say something along the lines like, hey, can you edit out? Can you get rid of my boyfriend? So they'll do something like, you know, put the person with like, you know, a, a a famous star that no one likes or just all sorts of craziness. So I've been having just an absolute blast doing that. That's what I've been up to. I'm here <laughs> for it. How about you, Tracy? What's going on in New York? No. No. Uh, <laughs> snow. Still in more snow. Uh, Look, I'm just going to say the meteorologist up here is a fat phase on liar. <laughs> and we weren't supposed to get this much snow. And we got this much snow. And it took us, my driveway is really long and it took us about uh, a good solid 12 hours of shoveling to oh get my. from my garage. How many down hours about of hours. shoveling? Yeah. That's, that's too much. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to so, get a snowblower. I got to get a flamethrower. Oh, we have one. We have, <laughs> we have a snow. We have a, a snowblower. And what's funny is is you guys know we we just moved into this house, right? And I'm still trying to figure out what all the switches do in this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, after it snows, I'm in the garage and I'm like, "What does this button do?" And I just <laughs> It's the You're not breaking stuff, are players. you? No. Yo, why did I just find out I have a heated driveway? Oh. Say what now? Everyone should have a heated. So you don't even have to shovel your driveway no more then, huh? Wow. I didn't even know that. I pressed it and I went inside because I didn't see any lights come on. So I was just like, I don't know. Maybe this is like a sun sensitive light. So let me just go inside and see what happens. And then I'm looking out the driveway a couple hours later. And I was like, wow, all the snow that I pushed on the side is like, God, what's, what's happening? <laughs> I go outside. I'm like looking around and I went to touch the ground because I was like, why is the snow all it was when I say it was all gone? I mean, it was gone. Oh. And I touch it and I was like, hey, the driveway's warm. The, dri the driveway's warm. Look, why did I call my realtor? Say, like, hey. What you lied to me. Did it have a heated driveway? <laughs> <laughs> and my realtor was like, um, let me check all the paperwork and stuff. Yeah, you have a heated driveway. Dang. Well then. Well, that's definitely not one to complain about. I mean, that's no, not a I want. I so here's the thing. Last year when it snowed and ice and it took us two days to get out of here because we had an inch worth of ice. Oof. You could have used that. We could have used that. Dang. Better late than never. So I'm telling everybody, go around your house, 
Everybody, press all the buttons. Man, my, my house was made in the 1800s. Ain't no buttons to press here. <laughs> Dang. Press your, press your buttons. Dang. I mean, you can press but, my buttons all you want, but that's a whole different conversation for another day. Ma'am. So I want to get in. Oh, wait. Hey, Miss T, how you doing? Hi, boo. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, real quick, I found out how to make a steak in an air fryer. Okay. It's amazing. Is it? Yes. And I, cause um, I had got some like really really cheap cuts of steak. It's like flank or skirt. I can't remember. Anyways, you know I didn't want to pan fry it. I don't have a grill cause I'm in an apartment. So I was like, I wonder if I could put it in my air fryer. Go on my little yeah. favorite time killer, aka Pinterest. Put in air fryer steak, and I come up with like a nine hundred recipes. I found one and it works. And it was excellent. Amazing. Wow. I'm so excited. Oh. Life life will never be the same for me. Wait, I have a question. Did y'all hear about all the people getting sick because of I uh air fryers? Wait, no, no. What? Yeah, a lot of people uh got really, really sick from air fryers. You and what? And, yeah, I okay, so I know, but just Y'all you already know. That after I have my like steak, my, my fried steak goodness, and you gonna tell me air fryers no. are killing people? No, air fryers. She said are making not you bad. sick. People, are, people, they're making you sick because people are not cleaning them. Oh. oh okay. Oh, they probably ain't using like liners or wiping the little thingy off after it cools down or nothing. They're not doing. They're not doing nothing. Oh Lord. They're not doing nothing to nothing and just putting meal on top of meal on top of meal in there and just eating sickness. Oh. And everybody was like, my air fryer is broken. It's making me sick. No, nasty. Yeah, you gotta clean You're not it. Cleaning. These are the same people that are probably it. that probably don't even like empty out the lint dryer and wash their legs. They don't wash their legs. I'll be honest, I don't use, I don't clean it after every single use, but it's like after you make certain things, you ain't got no choice but to clean it. Like if I make fish, I got to clean it. If yeah. I make chicken, it's going to have to be cleaned. I but when I food. air fry, like for my son, a hot dog, I, I don't always clean it directly after that. It might, it might be a couple hot dogs before I clean it again, but. But it's a hot dog. It's, it's already cooked. You're just warming the hot dog through, right? Exactly. Exactly. People just need to so, get those little yeah, liners gonna... that they have on uh, Amazon to put that no, in there. And even with the liners, oh, even with the liners, gross. You got to think because people aren't cooking their chicken all the way through sometimes too. Mm. Mm. Or they fish. But I'm a I'm a I'm gonna leave that alone because that ain't really about us. Uh. <laughs> My steak was amazing, and that's all we need to know. I think you need to share the recipe because, oh, wait, we need to do the bam, bam. Guess what time it is, y'all? What time is it? Where are we at? In Where are we in cuffing season? <laughs> okay, so we got what? One? Uh, we got less than a month away from the championship. Who is still with their Christmas and Halloween bay. You might be in the top 16 now. Super Bowl's coming. Do you take your partner to the Super Bowl party? It was and your, your, your partner has the opposing team. Oh, he get, they getting beat up? You gonna beat your partner up? On halftime? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want nothing good for me if you going against me. So you got to get beat up. That's like, that's that like law? That was the law. It, was, it, 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 New York law. it might be a New York law or a Texas law. That's probably a Texas law. It's a Philly law, too. It's, it's, a, Philly law it's, too. it's a law in Philly. Dang. Dang. Especially, yeah. especially, especially with some of them people from Texas. Oh. Shots fired. Don't do it. Ah, shots yeah. fired. We catch his strays, Tracy. We catch his strays. Ah, ah. My heart. My heart. Oh my gosh, somebody's bringing us a special delivery. 
Uh oh, special delivery. What did we get, oranges. Tracy? Yo, those look delicious. Thank you. Are those are those tangerines? <laughs> those, those are, are tangerines. <laughs> these are what are these tangerines? Cuties. 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 Oh, oh I love cuties. I feel like this is relevant to our topic today. It is very relevant. So guess what today's topic is? The orange peel theory. And for those of so, you who probably can't see what's going on, Tracy actually has peeled oranges. She did not. Very nicely. Them. They are not just peeled. They are very nicely. I think they're the Professionally. Veins. Yeah, right. Peeled. They are peeled in the veins. They take good care of me. All right. So... If you've been on TikTok or you've been on Instagram or you've been on Facebook, look, let's just be honest. If you're not underneath a rock, okay, (laughs) you've heard of the orange peel theory. And I'm going to give you a brief synopsis before I get into the article. So a brief synopsis is you're with your partner. You take an orange to your partner and you ask your partner, babe, will you peel this orange for me? And you record what their reaction is, right? And some partners are like, of course, here, give me the orange. And they peel the orange. And some partners' reaction are, no, I'm not going to peel the orange. You peel it yourself. And here's why you peel it yourself. I'm making you a better girlfriend by making you figure it out on your own. Babes, one, I'm going to say this real quick. In my most disrespectful voice, when I say babes, I I mean that disrespectfully. Babes, do you think I went through my life not knowing how to peel an orange? That Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. So let's get into it. So according to um, Huffington, the po- Huffington Post, it says, dubbed the orange pill theory. The idea involves the ability to understand your partner and their feeling based on their tendency to perform simple tasks for you, whether you ask them to or not, i.e. like peeling an orange. Videos have surfaced online with a multitude of reactions and stitches. The orange pill theory focuses on the idea that the small acts of service are not just acts about the action itself, but what it represents in the relationship. They signal care, love, commitment. The repetition of the act enhances the overall health and happiness of the relationship. These gestures are often simple, seemingly mundane, and are in fact pivotal in a nurturing, loving, and enduring partnership. Hmm. So when they say, it's not just like, can you peel an orange? It's like your partner sees that you're low on lotion and they grab you lotion. If you're a, uh, someone who has a, a menstrual cycle, your partner sees and understands that like, oh, babe, I'm I'm running low on tampons, tampad, whatever you use. And they, okay, what, what kind do you want? What size do you want? Scented, unscented, with wings, without wings? Do you want the cardboard? And so, like they understand and they are willing to nurture you instead of being like, ew, I have a phobia of going into the store and buying those. It's so gross. Ew, I can't do it. Okay, those are the mundane things that that we're talking about. It says, does your significant other peel an orange for you without having to be asked? Does she know um, if the smell bothers you or not? Do you even like the taste of oranges Um, or do you prefer your fresh peeled orange as orange juice? The idea that we all subconsciously seek signals from our partners to reassure us of their affection for us. So this article goes on and on, but basically what this is is an act of service, which is, uh, you may or may not have heard the term, uh, what's your love language, right? So this is one of the things that the orange, this is basically what the orange pill theory is about. So when we're talking about the orange pill theory, we also have to talk about like who made the orange pill theory. 
what are the pros and cons of the orange peel theory? Because what I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of pros and cons. So you're going to ask yourself. And before we jump into these next couple of articles, I really want you to understand what the orange pill theory is at its heart. If we break down the orange pill theory, it is you looking at your relationship and taking uh, what do you call that when you do the accounting? Like you're Assessment? looking, what'd you say? Assessment. Yes. You're doing an assessment of your relationship. And what you're asking is, are you being met where you're at? Or are you having to cross over and meet them where they're at and get their love language filled, but you're not getting it in return. Right? So that's really what this test is about when we break it down. And what I want to signal, what I also want to say with this is, should you be testing your relationship? What I'm going to say is, is I'm a weirdo. And I didn't realize that I test my partners in my relationship a lot, but I test with like dumb stuff. Like I'll be laying in bed and I'll be like, babe, would you still love me if you met me and I was an earthworm? <laughs> First of all, how are you going to know that's you, ma'am? They're going to be like, look First down and be all, like, be doing a this very... worm is the worm of my life. I'm going to put her on the <laughs> all, flower. It's, it's going to be raining. I'm going to be doing the most exotic earthworm dance. And that's how you're going to know it's me. Okay? You just going to stir out the ground like. Exactly. I'm the one that's going like this and arching off the ground. That's uh -uh. me. Pick me up. Put me in the tomato garden. Like, stop. Don't, don't be that way. But that's how, but that's just me being ridiculous, right? Should you test your partners? I think you should. If you have questions about your relationship, because here's the thing. Sometimes we're in relationships with people that are not emotionally mature. And we don't know how to exactly ask them the correct word, right? To, to say like, hey, do you, are you going to meet me where I am at? Or do I always have to kind of cross over? So it's a way for you to test, like you test drive your car. You could test a relation. I think you can test a relationship. Some people believe that it's unhealthy. But if you come from an abused background, which most of us kind of, we have some kind of abuse there. If we're talking to women, most of us have some sort of abuse there, right? And we need a little reassurance sometime. Now, I'm not saying like go out in the middle of the street and say, do you love me? And a bus is coming. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, ask your man, hey, if I was a doberman pitcher and I had a cigarette in my mouth, would you kiss me? First of all, I got questions I already. Know. If I were, if I was a dude and I'm the logical one, I already got questions. First of all, ma'am, you are a Doberman. You do not have an opposing thumb. How you get that cigarette? <laughs> Don't worry about any of that. Ask questions. But I would have no choice when, but to be amazed. You the don't question, know what right? the like we, just, we just had a good laugh about it, right? Because it can relax you into asking the real question of where do I stand in our relationship and like, you know, really, like, my need isn't kind of being met. I feel like you're not meeting me where I'm at at all. Can you, like, adjust you to give me my love language? And I don't always have to receive love in your love language. Because that is a thing where some people do. Well, this is my love language. And I only receive love language through, let's say, intercourse. So... Let's get into where love languages come from. Um, we're going to be talking about religion. Trigger warning. So, let, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to be. That's that's a part of this. That's why there are heavy pros and cons before we start getting into this. We really need to pump the brakes and really look at the whole situation. So, in 1992. 
pastor, the Baptist pastor, Dr. Gary Chapman released his book called The Five Languages of Love, The Secret That the secret to love that last based on decades of anecdotal evidence he gathered while working in his churches as his church's marriage counselor. While this is like really, I, I don't want to say great that you're a pastor or anything. I don't want to say anything like that, but I think it's interesting that he says that you literally, he tells people in the book that you literally only have two, but I don't believe that's true at all. I think you can have all of them and more. Um, I want to say that because his background is religion, right? He's not a trained therapist. He's not a trained therapist. So when you read this, don't take this to heart. I really want people to understand that this is just someone, someone's opinion. Um, also, when you're talking about this, you also have to appreciate the, well, I don't even want to say appreciate. You have to understand the fact that he's coming from a very patriarchal religion, right? Men have their part and what they do and women are their part. So uh, more than likely, the fault of not filling a love tank is probably going to fall on the woman. So be right. very aware with this conversation. So there are five love languages, he says. Physical touch, anything from hold handing to intimacy. Intimacy, okay, read into that. Acts of service, such as uh, assisting with tasks without necessarily being asked. Gifts, tokens of affection in any size, quality of time, and uh, words of affirmation, positive encourage, encouraging, and messages. So if you're talking about all of these things, he says that there's only two. If you look at that, that's a complete lie because I'm all of those. And I'm sure everyone is all of those. We all want that good stuff. So when you're doing that, I really want people to understand that there is this background to this, so it may not be as healthy as you think it is or as quote unquote pure. Okay, so what do psychologists and researchers think? Psychologists are keen to highlight that, again, he is not a trained therapist. These are anecdotes that he's learned from marriage counseling, and there is no success rate for the marriages that he's used this this training on well, there. to deal with some of these things you have to look at the whole picture and look at what these things really are but he's not taking into the the background so who is dr cherry gary chapman and we have to take a break so i'm gonna send it over to miss kd and we'll be right back all right so make sure you go ahead grab your drinks grab your snacks we will come back and have more discussion about the orange pill theory, look into love languages, and it's going to be very, 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 I don't know. I feel like this is about to get deep. <laughs> I mean, do you guys see it? It's about to get deep. Grab your drinks. Grab your snacks. We will be right back after these messages. <laughs> And we're back on Brown Sugar Confessions. Did you guys grab your snacks? Did you grab your oranges? Were they freshly peeled? Did 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 your did did you, did your significant other help you peel the oranges? We want to know if they have. Make sure you let us know by sending us an email to brownsugarconfessions at gmail dot com, or you can go to our social media because we are on. Every single one, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. You can especially find us on YouTube because if you go there, you can watch pretty much all of our shows over and over 
and over again. And you can leave a comment under this video when you see it there and tell us whether your significant other peeled the orange for you or what, how did they respond? We want to know. So follow us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok. Well, we recommend you follow Dr. Val on TikTok because my TikTok's not, not as lit as hers. Um, so you want to go there because it's always something interesting happening over there. But if your significant mm -hmm. other chose to not peel the orange and they acted in a way that you're just like, oh, this is not acceptable and you want to talk to someone about it, you can go to Dr. Val and send her an email directly at Valerie at Swan Center. That's S-W-A-N-N -N Center. Dot com. And with that, we are back and we are going to hop back into it. So take it away. So we're just going to give a little brief synopsis of who Gary Chapman is. Um, and we're going to be completely honest with this speak here because we're about giving the truth. He is not the best guy to be listening to. Uh, I mean, are any of them? That, Excuse me. Now. Yeah, let, let's be real. So I'm going to say he's not, he's one of the people I, I personally would not ever listen to or would value his word at all um, because he is a very strong belief. He is very sexist, very, mm. very sexist. And let's, let's be completely honest. Um, if we're talking about a Baptist preacher, we have to understand that there is going to be a certain level of indoctrination and what he expects from men and what he expects from women. And of course that leads to sexism and a lot of other chauvinistic attitudes and blah, blah, blah. So love tank and all of that thing. I do want to say that if you go looking for this book and you want to purchase this book, I want you to understand that this person, um, in, August, I think it was 20, no, 2013. Um, and a couple of times he had, uh, an entitled, it was like a Q and a, and it's something to the effect of my child is gay. Um, and he wrote speaking about the disappointment and, and having your child tell you that they're gay. Oh no! So I want that. you to understand that this is, Love languages is the same person. So I want you to understand that when you go through this, when we're talking about love languages, we also have to understand that if we're learning about love languages, we have to understand that the narcissist know about love language and narcissist is used very lightly as is, is lightly used. Everybody is a narcissist. You like peanut butter and jelly with a peanut butter on top narcissist. Okay. <laughs> What if we don't like jelly? Look, if you don't like jelly, then just eat a peanut butter sandwich. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is, is we're using words and a lot of people do not have comprehension skills. So I want you to take the time before you start using these words. I want you to really understand them before you apply them. So what is weaponizing love language sound like hey gifts aren't my love languages so don't expect anything for mother's day birthday or your christmas mm. sorry what yes i've okay so i went on a date with a guy one time and he was just like, he told me, he was like, you look like you like gifts all the time. And absolutely, yes, I do. I'm a pretty, pretty princess. Okay. Send me, give me all the good gifts. And he's just like, he told me, he was like, well, I'm not that kind of person. And I said, imagine coming to me, wanting to get with me and telling me what you're not going to do for me and thinking I'm going to stay. Hilarious. Huh. Hilarious. Or wait, what's that? What's that lady's name that's married to Alec Baldwin and her name is Hillary, but she says, everybody calls me Hilaria. Hilarious. Hilarious. No, that's not the way this works, boo. If you're giving me love, you give it to the way it speaks to me, not the other way around. 
that's one of the ways that these people like to gaslight you. Okay. Pay attention to how they talk to you because they're telling Taking you this. everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. So no, gifts no, are not no. my love language. They're not my love languages. So don't expect anything. Full stop. Red, red. Flag. Red. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my love language is sex. So I can't feel loved without sex. And I can't show you love until I get it. Oh, um, uh, squeeze me. Mick, squeeze me. (laughs) Mick, squeeze me. No, I don't want to be squeezed. I want to swing. Okay. So again, if you hear something similar to that, please understand that they are telling you who they are in the very beginning. And you're not going to change that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change that acts of services of service are not my love language. So I don't perceive all the work you do as loving. And I don't do more work around the house myself. So that means he's telling you, you're not doing enough. And even if you're Mm -hmm. doing it, it don't mean nothing to them. So keep doing it. Right. This house would get so dirty. I'm lying. I'm a Virgo. I will clean this up, <laughs> but I will be, I will open every window and be throwing stuff left and right. You wouldn't get no sleep with me in this house. First of all, why are they in your Two. house? Uh, yeah, okay. But when we watch the orange pill theory, go to TikTok. just type in orange pill theory and go through and watch I'm how scared to do it. these men watch how these men literally tell the women that they're with that I'm going to humble you. You love her, but you want to humble her. That is not love. That's not love. That is what they're telling you when you're getting into this and you're really understanding what the orange pill theory is about. You understand what these people are asking. Your love language is acts of service. And that's why you do most of the work around the house. Hmm. Yeah, I wish. Okay. So please understand when you're hearing those things and we'll put these up um, on our Facebook and on our Instagram when we do our, our posts and all that stuff. Look for these and look, listen, use that comprehension skill and listen and see how they're responding to you so that you can take an accurate assessment of your relationship right? That's all the orange period, orange pill theory is asking you to do. So when we're done really talking about the orange pill theory, we have some real questions to ask ourselves. We have to ask ourselves, you have to speak the unspoken truth about your relationship. If we're in 2024 right now, and you know, Everybody makes these New Year's resolutions and my relationships and this and that. The accountability in your relationships start with you. Are you being accountable to yourself for the things that you're demanding and people are not returning to you? If you are still continuing on in those relationships, are you doing it out of comfort? Are you doing it out of fear? Those are things you have to ask yourself. When we're done asking that, and we've observed all of our relationships, right? We observe them up close and then we observe them far away. Speak your unspoken truth. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to figure this out. And what I'm going to tell you to do is if you don't know a therapist, right? We have the lovely Doc Val. Reach because out. She's going to give you is an unbiased opinion from the outside and offer you a gentle hand so that you can navigate your relationships better. Because if we're talking 2024, how do we want better? This is how we do this. All right. If we're talking about orange pill theory and what everyone's response is, I have to tell you that. I did the orange peel theory as a Virgo should because I am plural for this look. So, you know, I, I kind of got some folks I'm surrounded by 
Mm. So I ask, I ask one person, hey, will you peel an orange for me? I laugh because they turned their head so slow. They were just like, you don't even like oranges. Oh. Do you, do that's you a good answer. Else? Do we have- and that's, <laughs> how, that's how you know they know you. They know it's yeah, a trap. They, they already know it's a trap. Yeah. Would you love me if I was an earthworm? All right. They already know. You don't even like oranges. Do you want some pineapple? And I was just like, no, no, thank you. Got up, cut the pineapple up. I ate pineapple. I ate almost half of pineapple last night. (laughs) (laughs) Ask another person, hey, will you peel an orange for me? You you don't even like oranges. Why? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, nothing is wrong. And I guess I look sad. I don't know. I think I was thinking, but they thought I looked sad. Do you need a hug? And I'm like, I'm never going to say no to a hug. And I'm like, I, yes, I want a hug. And they got up and gave me a hug. They they stopped their game, got up, gave me a hug, and gave me like the, the three big bear hugs that I like, like the really Aww. tight ones. And they were just like, do you want me to come watch TV with you? And I was like, no, I'm fine. And I go sit down. And then I ask another one, will you peel the orange for me? You don't even like oranges. Almost yelled at me. Almost yelled at me. I know which one this is. He's just like, what do you eat? And he's like, he's like, oh, eat it. Pineapple. It doesn't have enough flavor. Here, eat it with this. And he sprinkles to eat off of my pineapple and picks some up and puts it in my mouth. And he's like, it's, yeah. It's, I'm like, it's it's very good. And he's like, it's all you need. And he gave me a kiss and he was just like, you want some water? And I was like, yes, I want water. And he goes, you want it? He goes, you want it in your fancy cup or you want it in your stay cold mug? And I was like, fancy cup. And he was like, all right. But That's I'm not say- I'm not saying do this, right? What I'm saying is is when you're in a uh, in a relationship and people are one emotionally intelligent and understand that those kind of nurturing acts keep your relationship strong, they do them without hesitation. They do them without fuss. They do them without needing to humble you. Like ill to all of that so just when you're doing that expect the real response expect it and when you get it like do your tally do your tally and tell yourself the truth tell yourself the truth but that's it that's orange peel theory in a short condensed form i know that was long but it was short condensed for me because i had eight more articles but we're not going to go through those <laughs> Man, that's that is a lot of articles just a little bit just, just I'm a thorough. Bit. Just a bit. so but i think that's i think that's interesting i want to ask miss t and kd have you guys ever done the like not orange peel but like babe if i was an earthworm would you love me have y'all ever done stuff like that to y'all? One, there's nobody around. And two, I don't stick around long enough to ask. Yeah, no. I, I can honestly say I'm a very... I'm not that creative. <laughs> I mean, I may borrow that now. But yeah, I've never actually asked anyone anything like that. And I haven't tested too many people about orange pills or anything else. I'm really impressed at pineapple because... Here's the thing. Pineapples are really difficult to cut and I am awful at cutting them. So if you can find someone that's ready to cut a pineapple and slice them up for you, like that's definitely a keeper to me. And and was willing to brown it with butter and sugar because that's the way I like my pineapple. Oh, that's definitely a winner. (laughs) Butter, sugar, and tahini? What? Mm. Jealous. Uh, Actually, I, I'm coming I, over. Right. Yeah, come on. Come on. I'm like, coming I'm in the spring, right not now. coming in the fall or in the winter. Yeah. It, it, are the roads even yeah, clear enough to get there right now? I forget about that part. Um, they're, they're, <laughs> they are clear enough if you have all-wheel drive and you're not afraid to merge into the other side of traffic and then slowly get back into your lane. So, yeah, I'll see last you time, maybe the summer. 
Last time I was up that way, it was probably like 60 degrees everywhere else in the world. And then it's like as soon as you cross into this like certain threshold and get close to your area, all of a sudden it's just like. Uh, yeah, we're the Twilight it's Zone. Cold. It's, it's the Twilight <laughs> Zone up here. It really is. It's the Twilight oh, Zone up here. Everybody else is having, everybody else has spring. We don't have spring. We have, oh, it's Mother's Day and we're having a blizzard. Yeah, that's cold. Yeah, our Gross. official our official frost warnings don't end until like May. That's the orange pill theory. I th- we thought it was an amazing topic, and if we're coming up and we're doing cuffing season, and we're in the playoffs, you better you doing, ask about bro? that orange. Hey, I think that should be a mandatory question for sure in the cuffing season, right? Because let's let's be honest, we gonna get springtime and everybody gonna get hot in the pants. Let's not even pretend. I heard we got some hot topics. Let's do it. Man divorcing his wife after learning about her wild years in college. Stick with me. Here it goes. All right. College. College. So man of two kids married to his wife has filed for his divorce from his wife of 20 years. They have been married for 20 years once he found out about her wild years in college. Well, here's what happened. So this man, 43 years old, was having an honest conversation with his life, which led to the ending of their relationship. So essentially, what had happened was some of her college friends had came to visit uh, the wife. Uh, So they're at the man and his wife's house. They get talking about these times that they had in uh, college. The wife, I guess they were, uh, the college friends were under the assumption that the wife was single while she was in college. Turns out she was not single. She was dating said dude. They were just going Ooh. to the colleges, right? They get to talking like, well, what is this about? For friends, they kind of freeze up because I guess they got to talking about a subject that, you know, was kind of some girls going wild type stuff. On their way out, one of the friends goes or looks at the husband and says, you, re- you need to have an honest conversation with your wife. They talk about the time that her and the friends were talking about. Turns out not only was she telling everybody that she was single she was also dating other people while dating because you know college long distance relationship whatever and he felt real hurt about it she was like it's not a big deal so he was like i can't and walked out and filed for divorce so now i think the question overall is and here's my thing i'm not gonna say he's right for doing this but i kind of feel him like we had 20 years to at least hit me off of with it, you know, because assuming that we talk about everything, correct? As a married couple, you would assume that you talk about everything, even though some people have skeletons in their closet, whatever. Why am I finding out from your friends, your college friends, first of all, that ain't your friend, but your college friends that you were seeing other people and then was still in touch with said people throughout the marriage. Wait, the ones that she was sleeping with? Was she still sleeping with him? I don't think she was still sleeping with him, but I think she was still in touch with him. They don't really say, like, in here whether she was officially sleeping with him or not. She was just still uh, in touch with him. So, let me ask. So, were these people hanging with, Were these people hanging around or anything like that? Apparently, he met a couple of them. They both the jerks. They both jerks. Yeah. They both jerks. Yeah. Uh, they deserve each other. Please don't go out here and meet nobody else and be jerks to everybody else. We don't need we don't need no more boo boo in the swimming pool in the dating pool. We don't need no yeah. more. If they were just dating, I don't see the problem with it. Because here's here's what I'm gonna tell you. You, I was not your wife. If if this is how some people operate. And I'm completely okay with it. Like, I understand it. If we're just dating, you're not the only person I'm dating. Because here's the thing. I'm waiting for you to figure out if you want to commit to me. But this dude over here is like, until you put a ring and you change my name, that's it. Everybody is an option. I think it was a jerk to leave. It's been some time. Like, y'all need to be adults and, like, figure this out for real. I can understand why he's hurt. And I understand, I think I would probably be hurt that I didn't know, like, everything. But I don't care about my partner's body count at all. Right? Like, I don't really care. First of all, you coming to me with them skills. Use it. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Three, should she have said something when she was bringing these people around still and just letting the husband sit there clueless? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a that's kind of a that was a jerk a move. move. I don't like that. I just don't like feeling dirty. If if any of my partners and they've met people I have had relationships with in the past, they knew about it. I was like, hey, yo, this is a person I used to hang with. We had a few dates. It didn't go nowhere, but we're still friends. Oh, okay, cool. That was it. Yeah, so that's all you that's all she had to say, really. Like. Maybe, maybe. maybe I mean, maybe she knew what. Well, ended up being the issue is maybe he really wasn't capable of processing that. Well, so for that reason, somebody for twenty years, if you know they can't process it. I mean, at that point, it, so what's really interesting to me is I feel as if I mean, after twenty something years, like we really, you, we really gonna hold on to this. Whoever this this person is that told that snitched, <laughs> like they 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 ain't. They ain't, they ain't yeah. Um, Dang. Listen, when I was when I went to college, I had a boyfriend that I had. Um, we both went to college at the same time, and they went to one school. I went to a different one, and I'll never forget. I went to visit them. Got went two hours to go visit them on campus, and I just noticed how all the girls were like. <laughs> I dumped them when I got home. And the reason I did that is because we were going to spend four years on two completely different campuses. And I saw there was literally no way that you have all these women that's just <laughs> in your face. I know what's going to happen. So I'm going to let you live your life. And it wasn't like they did anything wrong. They did nothing wrong. I'm not even terribly jealous. But I know that if I'm all the way over here, you're all the way over there. I already know what you're going to be doing. And if I'm not okay with that, then it is what it is. If we would have linked up later, it would have been fine. So. I feel as if it's really kind of difficult to have the expectation that someone who is just fresh out of high school, having their first experiences going to college, isn't going to be experiencing the things. And to have that expectation to me is just, it's just wild. Maybe they're religious. Perhaps that's one of the reasons behind this. But other than that, I really just don't get it. Um, But I do understand that lack of trust. 20 something years. (laughs) I don't know. I think just, it, it just. Else. I think there was. I think so too. I think he was ready to go. I think he was ready to go, and that was just a wonderful yeah. excuse and opportunity to get out. Yeah, to be that honest, was a wonderful excuse to humble her in front of everybody and say, "I left because you was a cheater," but really, he wanted to do other things. Mm-hmm. I, I think they is, but I think they both boo boo, and they need to stay together so they can keep that boo boo together. Uh, I'm gonna say like in terms of. Uh, what should have should have happened before all of this went down lines of delineation should have been drawn they should have been like are we dating exclusively or are we just dating because there's a whole there's a big difference between dating exclusively this is my one person i am dating them i plan to get married with them i plan to have kids with them versus i am dating because we are cool but he is not the only one person i'm cool with Clearly, they were on two different sides of the fence and nobody was communicating. That should have been the thing. But they're high school people. It's whatever. So now they don't got married. They don't have kids. Now, she I would say the the part that got me more than anything was that she was bringing people that she had pre- previous relationships with around him. So now he looking like boo boo the fool, the clown. And that's when it was like, I would have been mad about that. They could have went to couples therapy and worked all of this out because they've been together for 20 years, you know? Um, But he decided, no, I don't even want to do that. I just want to be gone. So yeah, in that case, then I would feel like the same way you do, Tracy. He was just looking for a reason to get out. Guess what, guys? It's our time to end for the night. So thanks for joining us. This has been quite an interesting conversation. And we'll see you this time next week. Stay safe and play safe. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Brown Sugar Confessions on Power 1017. Go to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram page at Brown Sugar Confessions to like, share, and follow. Stay safe and play safe. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.